Hello, and welcome to our SAT prep video on practice test number three review. And in this video, we're going to look at the calculator problems that we, we have decided to go over with you guys. So we're going to start with problems number 10 and 11. Um, got this long paragraph. And really what happens in the end, all that matters is this, this last couple, this last sentence really here, it says, uh, the weight of an object on a given planet can be uh, found by using the formula W equals mg, okay? Now, that's our formula, right? W equals mg. And it goes through also in here and kind of describes to you, which is really important, what all of this stuff is. So W is the weight, okay? And uh, M is the mass. And G is the gravity on the planet, on that planet, whatever that planet is, okay? So very important you know what all those variables represent because we're gonna be solving for different things potentially. Um, number 10 says, what is the weight? So we're trying to find W, so I'll put a question mark there, just so we know what we're solving for. So W equals mg. What is the weight in Newtons of an object on Mercury with a mass of 90? So we know that our mass is 90, so m equals 90. But what is G? Well, we know we're on Mercury, and we know the gravity is 3.6 on Mercury. So G equals 3.6. So our W value is going to be 90 times 3.6. Okay, and that gives us, this is why it's a calculator problem. Don't expect you to do this by hand, even though you, you might be able to actually do this one, I think. Uh, 324. Okay. Uh, number 11. An object on Earth has a weight of 150 newtons. On which planet would the same object have an approximate weight of 170 newtons? So we gotta figure out the mass here. That's that's where the key feature. Now we know we're on Earth, okay? So on Earth, the gravity is, as we all know, 9.8. So 150 equals mass times 9.8 because we know that the weight is 150 on Earth and the gravity is 9.8. So the mass is going to be 15.31, okay? And now that we know that that is gonna be our mass, what we can do is we can take this, this part here, the weight of 170, so we can go 170 equals our mass, which is 15.31 times our gravity. We don't know what the gravity is, okay? So in this case, our gravity is going to be 11.1 roughly. Therefore, we're gonna be on Saturn, right? So there's our Saturn. So there's our answer, okay? So because we had that mass of 15.31, we can use, because it's gonna be the same mass. The mass is not gonna change. What's gonna change is the calculation of the weight because that's what gravity is going to affect. Your mass is not affected by weight, okay? Uh, by, sorry, by gravity, um, but your weight actually is considered affected by gravity. All right. Let's move along, take a look at question number 13. So here we go. Uh, 13 says, I'll zoom back in a little because we don't need to zoom out that far for this one. Uh, we've got all this stuff going on. None of the wording really matters. All that really matters in the end is we're gonna be solving for V in terms of. So basically what this means is solve for V, okay? So you've got this equation. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the 16t squared over and I'm gonna subtract k over. So we're gonna have h plus 16t squared minus k equals our vt, okay? Again, we're just solving for v, just manipulating algebraically. We're just solving for a variable. So now because it's k times, or sorry, v times t, I wanna divide by t, All right? So these are gonna cancel. I should cancel these out up here. Um, and you have your answer now. Your answer is going to be um, in a kind of a form that maybe you're not familiar with, but it will end up being letter D in a second here. Okay, so what I can do next is I can do H um, minus K over T. Okay, I kind of rearrange the top there a little bit. And I'm splitting this now 16T squared over T. That's a plus because that was a plus 16t squared. It's a property of fractions. Usually for fractions, you kind of condense them into one, but you can also split them into multiple fractions. And this is equal to v. And the reason I would do that is because this t's reduce. And again, I would only do this to be honest, because how else would I see the answer, okay? 
I would have seen no problem with stopping like right here normally in an algebra class, but that wasn't one of our options, okay? So we had to do some more algebra work to get the solution, which was actually letter D, okay? Then we don't use the same color there. Our answer is letter D. All right, so that's number 13. So really it was just a solving for a variable, but they made you go that extra step of kind of simplifying stuff uh, in, in a unique way to get the answer they wanted. Okay, next up we're gonna look at uh, this one here, number 16, I'll zoom back out for us a little bit. And in this case, it says for which X value, so we're solving for X, does F of X plus G of X equals zero? Well, let's think about what's gonna, gonna what this is gonna mean. So F of X, this is a Y value, okay? G of X is also a Y value. So let's start there. Okay, kind of tells you that, you know, right here and right here, but just reminding you. Function notation really means Y value, okay? And how do we get this to equal zero? So when does this equal zero? Well, that would be when F of X and G of X are opposites of the same number, of the same value. Okay, so for example, five and negative five, seven and negative seven, 10 and negative 10, right? If I do 10 plus negative 10, I get zero. So where does that happen? Well, if you look at your graph right here, G of X, so G of uh, negative, let's see, two equals two. And right here, F of negative two equals negative two. So you see how if I add those two plus negative two, so F of negative two, plus g of negative two, that's gonna be negative two plus two, which is gonna be zero, that works out, okay? A common error would be to select these ones. These, just so we're clear, this is where f of x equals g of x, okay? In this case, this would be like f of x equals negative g of x. If I move the g of x over, it would be negative g of x. So that's not what we want. Also, how would you know which one to use? Because that happens at negative one and negative three. Those are both answer choices. So obviously, how would I select the right one? Because they both would be right in that case. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for that x value there. All right, let's keep it going here. We're looking at um, number 17 and number 18 next, okay? So number 17, um, again, go through and read what this stuff represents. S of P gives the quantity of products supplied, okay? And D of P gives the quantity of the product demand in a certain market, okay? Uh, number 17 says, how will the quantity of the product supplied so that's S of P, so let's be clear here, this quantity of product supplied, that would be S of P. Um, how will that change if the price of the product increased by 10? Okay, well, so we've got our S of P equals one half P plus 40. Okay, and if the price increased by 10, that's gonna be this concept right here, right? Price is P, so it's kind of essentially slope. I'm not gonna break it down too much, but essentially slope. So one half times 10 gives us five. So that's gonna increase our price by five. It's really an idea of a slope application. Um, the top and the bottom represent certain things. Uh, the top represents S of P, and the bottom just represents P actually, okay? But you can use this little calculation, get your answer, and you're good to go. All right, and then the next one here, number 18 we're gonna do, says at what price will the quantity of the product supplied equal the quantity of the product demand? So basically we want the product supplied, that's S of P, and will that equal the product demand, which is D of P, all right? So we want S of P to equal D of P. So we go back, we take our two equations, we set those things equal. So one half P plus 40 equals 220 minus P. And we just start solving for P here. So one half P um, 
equals 180 minus P. Oh, now I'm, so I subtracted the 40 over, just to be clear there. Now if I add P over, not five, add P. So I get three halves P equals 180. So P equals 180 times two thirds. Okay, which is gonna be 120. So the price would be 120. All right, so that was number 18. Uh, next up, we're gonna move on to what I got here, number 26. So kind of a ways to go through here. So let's look at number 26. So there we go. It says in the XY plane, uh, the line determined by the points 2 comma k and k comma 32 passes through the origin. Which of the following could be k? So we know the origin is 0, 0. And if they're on the same line, okay, so same line equals same slope. Let me zoom in a little bit here. Okay, so you've got a point, so find the slope between 0, 0 and let's say 2k, 2 comma k. So that would be k minus 0 over 2 minus 0, which is k over 2. And now let's find the slope between 0, 0 and k comma 32. So that would be 32 minus 0 over k minus 0, which is 32 over k. And again, because um, because these two points, right, these two points here, this point and this point, they're on this line, but that line also passes through zero, zero. It means that no matter which two points I pick, we're gonna have the same slope every time. So I chose to find the slope between two K and zero, zero, and K comma 32 and zero, zero, because that would give me two equations that have K in them. So this and this, and now I can set them equal to solve for K. So two over, uh, K over two equals, 32 over k. So cross multiply. So k squared equals 64. So k equals uh, it's technically plus or minus 8. Okay, but you can see from our solutions here, the only possible answer is going to be then positive 8 based on the answers they gave us. All right. And the next couple we're going to do, we got two left, I believe, here. These are going to be in the uh, free response section, the grid and res the gridded response section. So we're going to look at number 33. So here we go, there's 33. Okay, it says, if the expression above is rewritten in the form ax squared plus bx plus c, a, b, and c are constants, what is the value of b? So really just this goes back to some polynomial operations. We want to distribute this into here, and I'll include the negative. So I'm gonna get negative three x squared plus five x minus two plus, because I'm gonna distribute the negative, negative two x squared plus four x minus one. And again, we're only looking for what b is, okay? So we're only looking for the bx term. So really this and this is all that actually matters, okay? And we're adding them. So what is this gonna give me? Nine x, so b equals nine. I don't need to go through and combine all of the terms because I only need the x term, okay? I need the coefficient of the x term. So I just took care of that and made it a lot faster by not doing everything. You could go ahead and do everything, but you know, you're know you just kind of spending time on stuff that maybe you don't want to spend time on. And our last number, our last problem here is number 30, uh, number 36. In the XY plane, if a point with coordinates A comma B lies in the solution set of the system of inequalities above, what is the maximum possible value of B? Okay, so it would kind of help, I think, to look at this graphically, okay? So if we graphed this, imagine this is kind of a line, y equals 5x, right? So that would have a slope. I'm just doing a very generic graph, so something like this, okay? And then if we were to graph the other one, this one, you know, you've got an intercept of 3,000, and you've got a slope of negative 15, so it's going to kind of come down like this. And because they're inequalities, okay, because we have these inequalities, we'd actually be shading like this in between them, because you see how it says less than and less than. So it's gonna be that part in between these, okay? And we're trying to find the maximum value of B that fits this region. Well, it's gonna be right here. It's gonna be that intersection point, right? So this Y value is gonna equal the max. 
Okay, so I just graphed the two lines. All the inequalities do is force it to shade below the line. So I know yellow is not a great color, so maybe just use something else. This means to shade because it has less than. So you would shade below the line. Okay, and it's a system, so you want the overlap essentially, which is that yellow region there. And you can see, based on our restricted region, the maximum value of B, which is the Y value, right? That's your Y value, is going to be at that intersection point there. So let's figure out where they intersect. So I want to set them equal and solve. So negative 15x plus 3,000 equals 5x. So 3,000 equals negative, or not negative, it's positive 20x. So x equals 150. And I can go back and solve for Y. So Y equals 5 times 150 which is going to be 750. That's my largest possible B value or Y value in this case. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.